apart from AI, one of the biggest culture shift in the 3D animation um, industry is the adoption of representing your 3D um, assets or animation in a form that looks like 2D. Because this has always existed, but the Into the Spider movie made it quite popular. In this video, my goal is to show you how you can create your own tune shader and we will experiment with different techniques so that you can see how you can push the boundaries to get different looks. And finally, we will be looking at the grease pencil line art where we'll use to create the outline. So this will be a very fun and intuitive tutorial. Um, so if you're up for it, let's get started. By the way, if you're a beginner and I, I use a shortcut that I probably forget to mention, um, you can look here and you can see my shortcut. Okay. So what we want to do first, when we select our asset, we want to click, um, create a new material and we can just call this tune. Okay. And we can switch to our node tree and create to have, make sure you have two windows, one for your shader editor, and then you can be able to access this panel. Next is you want to make sure your render engine is set to EV, not cycles. Ideally, if it's stone, your probably not going for something that looks quite realistic. And another reason why we use an EV, it's it contains a particular node, which is the shader to RGB, which is quite essential for this effect. Okay. So now we're going to delete this node and add a simple diffuse and we'll plug this surface. Uh, we plug it into the surface. Okay. Uh, next we'll go up, um, ahead and Select and grab the shader to RGB, plug it in. But let's go into our mater material preview so we can see what's happening. We preview the diffuse or preview the shader to RGB. Nothing seems to be happening. So we want to be able to kind of get in a nice mask that we can apply to our color. So let's get the map node and switch it from add to subtract. And for the final stuff, you want to grab the color ramp. And you can move the slider and of get the nice black and white and this reacts to light. Okay. We want to get very nice sharp distinction between the white and black. So to achieve that, we want to switch this from linear to constant. When we move the slider, you can start seeing that. Then with this value too, we also give you some more control for that. And as you can see, we have a nice tone looking shader. If we move our HR lamp, which I'm doing by holding my control out. Um, and this is possible because of an add-on called HDRI rotate um, HDRI. So it's a, this is a really powerful and intuitive tool that you, it's free. You can check it online and download it. Okay. So we have our base tune shader. At this point, if you're looking for something very simple, you could basically use this as a mask and the base color, and then you get your shadow color. So let's push this even some more. We can duplicate this. So now we want to create like a mid tone, a blend between the shadow and the base color. So we are duplicating this. Um, nothing is changing. We'll probably have to play with this value, uh, but we want to duplicate this mix, mix node and then plug it into the plug this color. And if we do this some more, we can see we're getting a blend between the two. So that's how we, um, we've created our simple um, shader. So with this kind of setup, you have uh, you have ability to generate different type of mass. Uh, for example, if we want an outline, we can add the object info node. Oh, probably not this one. That's the sorry. We'll grab the layer weight node, and let's get this, and we'll connect the face to the factor. And if we preview this. We can move the slider and this can create a nice outline for us. If we use this as a mask 
in the uh, outlined black. So you you can have an extra control if you want to create the outline with mask. Let's just create a nice cool effect. Let's say you want still in this color. Something. Hey, for this situation, I don't need that. Um, what else can you do? We can manipulate the normals. Uh, since these are just shaders. So let's add a merino texture. And we'll also grab a vector and we'll grab a normal. So if we preview the color and we move the scale, uh, we can see how it is, but due to the UV map of this object, it's not uh, represented, representing it nicely. So we can get our mapping up, probably because this isn't generated, so it's not representing it nicely. So we're going to switch it to UV, so it kind of um, displays it nice. So if you scale this, um, you kind of get a kind of faceted look, which we can plug into the normal. And it will plug this into the normal of the diffuse object. And we can see the effect it's creating. So if we reduce this, we can reduce the influence of that facet, uh, facet look. And you can play with the scale. So let's say this like 50. We'll also plug it right here. And now the output would give us something very artsy. And increase the strength and kind of mess up the normal and reduce it and increase the scale. But there are just a lot of ways you can um, just keep building on it since you're just basically adding effect. You can choose you want it to just affect the shadows or you choose it affects just the base color. I think that's the shadow is base color. So, um, like I said, there are a lot of ways you can kind of play around with this to get um, different cool result. So, what next? Um, we'll be going into the line art. Let's give this like a nice um, human skin tone. Okay, and then this give it something like that. Okay, um, for the line art, it works without camera, but it works much better with your ca camera in the scene. So let's add our camera in the scene and let's make some changes to the resolution. I'm going to set this to 1000 by 1000. And for the focal lens, with 2D animation, they usually have a higher focal length, so that is still 150. So it feels almost flat. Um, as we already get perspective for free using 3D. Okay, so this is what we have. And for the line art, you could either apply it to a collection. So if we move this uh, object into a collection and add uh, wrist pencil, blank stroke, and go to the modifier. So make sure you select your grease pencil. Grease pencil has its own modifier system. So once we have that, we can select line art for the grease pencil and select collection one, apply it, select the existing material within that grease pencil object uh, material. So this is for your kind of selecting for the layer, um, the material. And then you can play with the thickness and stuff like this. Okay, so this is well, one way of adding it. Or you could select your object, go into Grace Pencil, Object Line Add. So it's going to automatically fill out this information for you. And it also works for automatically filling out the information for a collection um, setup. So how can we push this um, even more? So uh, you, oh, if we do that, let me switch to render, make it look nice. Okay. 
this. Okay, so how can we push this even more? I am going to go to the line art. This is the one I have. Okay, so we can add layers on top layers of modifiers to create like crazy effects with this. So for example, um, all the lines are connected. I mean, there are a lot of settings with the line art, which you could go in um, to kind of learn about that. But we're kind of just, I'm showing the broad look of how you can go about this. So uh, let's say you want to add, like you want to break up the straight line so you can add a dot dash. So we can play with this value, this values, kind of um, break the line. Okay, so this is just a starting point. So you could also choose to have multiple strokes, uh, and we can reduce the distance. Bring it in. You fade them. They kind of kind of give you this nice washed off if um, effect almost. Um, but my usual go to is adding the noise. You just break it up a little bit. You can add for the noise to kind of add noise to basically the thickness, the opacity, and the position. It is brighter color. Okay, we're almost there. Um, I think I'll really increase the length of this a bit. So, what else can we do? We can add this, um, we can add a simplify. I usually use this to kind of get like a breakup. Um, I usually gravitate to a more sketchy side of things, so um, this gives me that. I'm going to remove this normal stuff, it's making it feel like a rock and not very too sunny. So once you remove that, we're going to get a different effect. Yes. Just like color. So it's going to feel like it's almost um, the artist was in a rush and kind of drew outside the line. One other, other cool effect which I just discovered you could play with is uh, you can add this length. So you, or you draw outside the line. It's not very even. And there you go, you have your animation, um, your line art. Uh, at this point, you can just go in and experiment for yourself. Um, you'll be missing out if you've, you don't play with this um, a lot. Uh, there are lots of things you can make happen with this. So with or without the line art, you can create a new style, uh, which you can experiment with. Um, so that would be it guys. I, oh, one more tip. If you plan on animating this and you use noise, uh, make sure you turn off random as if you have random turn on, uh, for some reason you get, um, this. So without the noise, we get like a more consistent line stroke. Um, and so for some art style, you want that sketchy randomness. Um, but for some, you might want it to stay the same. I want to... Okay. Okay. So I want to select this. And give it a different color. Give it a white color.
So, and also applying your rotation and scale for the line art also comes in handy to, handy to reset stuff. So yeah, this is it. Uh, if you leave me, I'm just going to keep experimenting uh, with this. But yeah, that's the gist of it uh, for the most part. Oh, one cool one. You could use envelope. Um, let's try fill. Or is it the form? And then you can play with the opacity. And you duplicate this. And oh, this one you don't have the envelope. And for the duplicated one, you have the opacity set. So just a lot of things you could do to get very unique to looking abstract art stuff. Yeah. yeah so that's it for this tutorial. I just keep going. Uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, please like, hit the like video, subscribe. If you wish to see more for me, that'll be it. Bye bye for now. See you next time.